Good evening. My name is uh, Pastor David McCarthy, and I'm the pastor of the Faith Baptist Church. Uh, the building in which you sit has been on this site since 1960, I think, seven or 68. We've had a school here since 1972. And except for a couple of years that we needed to shut down for financial reasons, we have had a graduating class each and every year. On behalf of Faith Baptist Church and the students and staff of the Baldwinsville Christian and Academy, we welcome to you. The students that we celebrate today are a testimony to Faith Baptist Church and Baldwinsville Christian Academy's faithful, faithfulness to providing your students and your children with a solid, biblically-based Christian education. And we are so glad that you are here. On behalf of Faith Baptist Church, I want to congratulate all of the graduating seniors and their families for a job well done. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as we lift up our accomplishments today, we recognize that it is only by your power and because of your grace that we are even here. The fact that we have uh, brought into this world six new students, new, I'm sorry, six new graduates. Father, it is a testimony uh, beyond what we can imagine. We thank you, Father, how you have provided your grace and your love to us and to these students. I thank you, Lord, for bringing Baldwinsville Christian Academy into existence. I thank you, Father, that we can use Baldwinsville Christian Academy's staff to produce and help bring about students that love you. We ask you, Father, to bless our time together and to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Dave Gray. I'm the administrator. Um, these are always exciting evenings. They're always uh, happy and sad evenings. And uh, we're just so thankful that so many have come out to share it with um, our graduates this year. Um, as is tradition, uh, each year the, uh, the uh, senior class works hard all year to raise money for their senior trip. Um, this year they were able to do a week in Virginia Beach, um, did some educational stuff and had some fun. Um, and then a portion of what they raise also goes towards a senior gift. And Brennan Egan is gonna come up and share a little bit about that gift. 
does that, I have a little bit of a surprise for him. Brennan um, has a little bit of an award that I've been saving. We didn't do it on award day because I thought today would be more appropriate, but Brennan has not missed a single day of school in four years. So he's perfect attendance for his entire high school career. That doesn't even commute for me. I don't compute. I don't think I ever missed, didn't miss a day in like four weeks of school. So very, very impressive. So we have a, a perfect attendance award as well as a gift card to Buffalo Wild Wings so he can celebrate his perfect attendance. Cool. All right, so this year our senior class decided to donate the materials to, um, to the school to build six new benches in the new, newly renovated locker rooms. We did this because we, after many years of going here, we grew, grew sick of this, this, cri this crisis that we were going through with no benches. And so we decided to build, um, donate materials to build six new benches for our school. And Allie, I think I saw you with your phone out in school at least four times. <laughs> 
it's too late to do anything about it now. Um, so next I want to present to you our salutatorian. Um, it was a very, very difficult call this year. In fact, the salutatorian and the valedictorian were separated by 0 0.015 points on their GPA. Um, so that was like one, you know, one, one quiz or something out there. Um, so we're just very, very proud of both of them. Um, uh, Rome, Bume, will you rise for us? Let's give her a round of applause. She really didn't want to give a speech, but I told her she at least had to stand up and be cheered for. So thank you so much. Um, and next, I will introduce our valedictorian, Petula Morgan. OK, good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. As Mr. Gray already in introduced me, I'm Petula Morgan. I want to start off by thanking my family and friends and my teachers and coaches through the years who have all helped me and supported me get to where I am. Um, I especially want to thank Ms. Cosma, Mrs. Meany, and Coach Gray, all for being incredible female role models for me and teaching me to strive for greatness in all aspects of my school life, whether that be academically, mentally, or physically. They've shown me what it looks like to be a strong young woman, so I want to express my gratitude to them for that. Another amazing role model has been my mom. She has been there for me through everything and supported me in everything that I do whether that be helping coach on the soccer team or helping me with my homework, even if she didn't understand it. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank my dad because he's also been there for me through everything. Um, okay, anyone who knows me knows that it would probably be impossible for me to get through this speech without mentioning Taylor Swift at least once. <laughs> She's an amazing role model as well and her music is inspiring and it also helped me get through some tough study sessions. So. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank my fellow graduates. You all have been amazing friends to me throughout all of our years going to school together. And I'm so proud of us and how far we've all come. I look forward to entering this new chapter of our lives together and I can't wait to see what it holds for us. So congratulations, because we made it. I know we're all really, really happy to be done, but I enjoyed going to school with you guys. And good luck to all the current and future students at BCA. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> All right, at, at this time I'd like to introduce our commencement speaker. Uh, pastor Steve Nielsen is the pastor at Fulton Alliance Church. Um, so he's gonna be sharing some, some insight and some encouragement and some wisdom uh, with our seniors and uh, maybe just a little bit for us as well. Thank you so much for being here. Good evening. Good evening. And graduates, you made it. And uh, your parents are certainly proud of you, and they're glad you're done, I think. But we will find out, won't we? Uh, but it's an honor for me to be here tonight and to share some things with you. I, um, I want to give you 10, 10 quick uh, words of wisdom that hopefully you can uh, find something in these 10. And then I'm going to focus on one verse of the Bible. But... Um, so here are some words of wisdom. Dance like nobody's watching, because they are not. They are all checking their phones. <laughs> when they hand you your diploma tonight, keep moving just in case they want to take it back. <laughs> Call your mother, or at least text her in the coming year. Think of others, not just your interests. We are living in a very selfish society. So think of others. When you fall down, always, always, always get back up. Call your mother. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes. Every mistake you make can mean progress. Remember, when it comes to applying for jobs, books are judged, are, they are judged by their cover. Call your mother. <laughs> And now that you've graduated, just remember, bosses and professors don't usually accept notes from your mother. So those are my quick 10 words of wisdom for you tonight. A young man from a wealthy family was about to graduate from high school, and it was the custom in his family that his 
parents would buy him a car. So he went and shopped around for cars with his father, and he picked out the one that he wanted. But he knew he wouldn't get that gift given to him until the night before his graduation. On the eve of his graduation, his father handed him a small package and said, here's the most valuable gift a father could think to give to his son. So the son began to open the, the present, and in it he found a Bible. And he was upset. He wanted the car. Tossed the Bible to the side, and he and his father didn't speak for several years after that. Then his father passed away. He brought him back home again. And following the funeral, he sat alone one evening, going through his father's possessions that he was to inherit, and he came across the Bible his father had given him. Overwhelmed by grief, he brushed away the dust and cracked it open for the first time. When he did, a cashier's check dated for the day of his high school graduation was found inside, and it fell out the exact amount of the car they had chosen together. The gift had been there all along, but he had turned it away. All gifts are not obvious. They take wisdom. Now, I have the privilege of having been born and raised in Africa and living there a total of 37 years. So when it comes to wisdom, we often refer to African proverbs. And I'm going to give you a few of those and then focus on one proverb found in the Bible. Here's the first African proverb. Ears that do not listen to advice accompany the head when it is chopped off. Word of wisdom. Only a fool tests the depth of a river with both feet. Knowledge is a garden. If it isn't cultivated, you can't harvest it. There are no shortcuts that exist to the top of the palm tree. Once you carry your own water, you'll remember every drop. This is true. If you think you're too small to make a difference, try spending the night with a mosquito. The fool speaks, the wise man listens. Wisdom does not come overnight. Knowledge without wisdom is like water in the sand. One day in the life of a wise man is worth a fool's entire life. Aren't those good? Some of those you may be caught. Some of them you'd have to process a little more, and I'm not going to send them home with you so that you have to process them. But what I am going to send you home with tonight is a verse from the Word of God, which I think and hope will stay with you. You can put it in your Bible. You can find a place to tuck it, pull it out from time to time. The book of Proverbs in the Word of God is rich and worth paying attention to. You know, you can read one proverb a day and in one month you finish it. And you can do that 12 times a year, and you can do that for the rest of your life, and you will find that there are key principles to glean from the book of Proverbs. A couple of them that come to mind when I was thinking about it is, first of all, the wisdom you learn. Seek wisdom. That's what the book of Proverbs is all about. Seek wisdom. People chase all kinds of things in life. They chase success, money, love, happiness. It will, and it does, disappoint Seek wisdom. It'll serve you best. The decisions you make, make them wisely. That's the second thing that I learned from reading through the book of Proverbs. People are shaped by the decisions they make. Without wisdom, decisions can ruin a person. Make the wrong decisions, and you will find yourself in a real pickle. So make wise decisions. You're always one choice, they say, away from changing your life, for good or for bad. So make your decisions wisely. Then the third thing that I pick up on in the book of Proverbs is the friendships you cultivate. Choose the right people you walk with. 
I used to teach at a college and every student that came in their freshman year, I would sit down with different ones that were assigned to me, mostly the guys, and I would say, here's the deal. Your college experience will be based largely on the friends that you choose. Choose the right friends, your college experience will be great. Choose the wrong friends and I can trust you, you'll be flunking out or leaving the school disappointed with your experience. Choose your friends wisely. But the verse that I chose for you and for your class is Proverbs 16, verse three. And it's a, a very short one, but uh, it's, a, it's a valuable one. So it says this, put God in charge of your work, then what you've planned will take place. That's how the message says it. The one I gave you says it this way in the Amplified Bible. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. I think everybody out here wants to see you succeed. I don't know you, most of you. I know Allie a little bit. But I can tell you this. I would like to see you succeed. So I give to you this. First of all, planning is good. Plans, we all have them. Some of you are probably real detailed planners, and some of you not so much, and that's okay. Doesn't require all detailed plans, but where does planning fit for the Christian? How do you go about it? There's a lot in the book of Proverbs about planning. The first thing that I wanna point out to you in the verse as I gave it to you is that the Hebrew word that says commit is really to roll. Roll your plans onto the Lord. Commit your work. Roll your work onto the Lord. And when we commit our works to the Lord, what we are doing is rolling them onto him so that he can guide us in them. I can tell you, if I, could, if I had two hours tonight and gave you my testimony, I would tell you how many times I have rolled my plans onto the Lord because they weren't going the way I thought they were going to go. I thought I'd be a missionary for all my career. I spent 22 years doing that. And when that came to an end, I go, whoop, okay, Lord, what do you have next? I roll my plans onto the Lord. I encourage you to learn early to roll your plans to the Lord. This verse gives some indication on how to plan. And I give you this, what is involved in rolling our works onto the Lord? First of all, ask what kind of works we should be doing. What does he want us to do? Now, some of you are maybe headed off to college. Some of you may be other plans. Maybe you'll change your plans once you get to college. That happens a lot too. But you should be asking him, what works does he want you to do? And you will find that by spending time in his word and learning his heart. When you learn his heart, you will want to do the plans that he has designed for you. So spend time in his word. Secondly, he enables, he gives strength and wisdom for the works that he calls us to do. We commit ourselves to his path. It's about obedience. Sometimes it will be difficult. We want to give up. We want to modify the plan. Find plan B. Start over. And I can tell you, you commit your plans to the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord and he will guide you. Now the promise, and I'll wrap up with this. What is the promise to this kind of planning according to this verse? Your plans will be established and succeed. Your plans will be established and succeed. Now maybe you've never heard of Stanley Tam. Stanley Tam was born in 1915. And as of last year, he was still living. So. Test your math. If he was born in 1915 and he was still living last year, how, he, how old was he? 1915 to 2021. 100 and what? 106. Okay, he was 105 when somebody interviewed him and he was still alive. Stanley Tam was a door-to-door -door salesman and he met a farmer's wife who told him about Jesus. 
Six weeks later, while in a church, he placed his faith in Christ. With $25 of his own in his pocket, plus $12 from his father, he launched the United States Plastic Corporation in Lima, Ohio. Within two years, he was broke. And God said to him, turn your business over to me. So legally, he gave 51% of his business to God. He just committed that 51% of his business belonged to God. The business began to take off, but a few years later, God said to him, I want all of your business. And he wrestled with it, and he gave it all to the Lord, 100% legally to the Lord. He gave, he had a little salary that he took from that, but he committed it to the Lord. Today, if you Google the United States Plastic, United States Plastics Corporation in Lima, Ohio, it's a huge company. Now it's still owned by a Christian man. It says Christ is the answer on the side of it. He says, God owns my business. Graduates, you're at a crossroads. What will you do? Commit your way to the Lord. All the time, everywhere you go, commit your way to the Lord and he will make your plan succeed. Not always in the ways you thought, but in the ways he knows best. I have come to realize that when Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I've come to realize this. Your paths will be straight when you look behind you, not when you're looking ahead. I have zigzagged through my life in ways that I would have never imagined, but when I look back, I see how every bit of it fits in with God's plan for my life and how he has used me. And I encourage you, I challenge you, as you take every step from here on out, whether it's the college, whether it's jobs, whether it's uh, learning a trade, whatever it may be, commit your ways to the Lord. Pull that little card out from time to time and roll your thoughts, your plans over to the Lord and let him guide your path. Father, I come to you tonight and I thank you for these graduates. I pray for them tonight, Lord. They don't know, nobody knows except you what is ahead for them. But I pray, Father, that they will learn the best thing in life they can do is to commit their ways, to roll their plans over to you and say, Lord, you guide me, you lead me, you direct me so that you can make them succeed in the ways that you design for them. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nielsen, uh, for sharing. I think there was a uh, little bit, a lot of it in there uh, for, for everyone, actually. All right, so this is the time that you've been waiting for. Um, a little bit of instruction for our parents in the room. Um, we're going to take this nice and easy. One of the many benefits of a small school is we can take our time with things that are very important. And so um, we're going to celebrate each graduate. They're going to come. They're going to receive their diploma. That is for them. They're also going to receive uh, a small bouquet of flowers, a rose. Uh, that is for you. We know the commitment that it takes. Um, we know the dedication that it takes. We know the sacrifice that it takes to put them through school and to put them through BCA and to be every kind of support that you have been all along the way. So once they have received their diploma and their rose, uh, we invite you to just come up briefly. Um, they're going to come down and join you. Um, take your time. Not a lot of time, but take your time. And uh, once you've had a few moments, they'll return to their seat and we'll move through each graduate. So uh, our first graduate this evening is our salutatorian, Rome Bume. Um, she has a gold cord. You'll see the gold cords on some. Um, she's receiving an academic with distinction diploma, uh, which means she went far above and beyond. Um, on top of being the salutatorian, um, did uh, two and a half more credits than she had to um, for graduation. Um. Um, next for uh, Rome is college at OCC. 
and then graduating and going to work. That's the plan. Sounds like a similar plan to most of ours. Brennan Egan's plan is to work constantly and attend OCC for culinary school next fall and get a full job in culinary school. Hopefully it's in town. Next we have Allison Haynes. Um, what's next for her is phlebotomy or college. The word scared me when she first handed it to me and it scared me just now again, but we got it right. Um, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Hopefully with a boyfriend, a good job, living in an apartment. Very practical, I like it. Johnson. Um, Aaliyah will also be attending OCC um, and in five years hopefully an official cosmetologist. I changed career paths. She probably knows what that means. <laughs> Next we have our valedictorian, Petula Morgan. Um, she's gonna be doing general studies at OCC and in five years, hopefully healthy and happy and living life to the fullest. Um, and additionally, she was really happy that she got one of the pretty rope things. So there's, so there's that. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Dan Nans. Um, what's next for Dan is joining the military or working in electrical. Um, and in five years, he hopes to be in the military or working electrical. <laughs> <laughs> It is a great honor and privilege to present to you the class of 2022.
All right, before we dismiss, uh, one more uh, order of business. This is a little bit um, unorthodox for us, but we have somebody very special to recognize uh, this evening. Um, Miss Austin uh, has been teaching here for many years. Um, she actually attended BCA um, for her entire school career, went off to college, was hired immediately out of college, and has been here ever since. Um, and so she has found um, something very attractive down south in the lines of a job and of uh, the South, uh, you know, South Carolina in, it, in and of itself. And so we just wanted to take a moment to recognize Miss Austin for all of her years of service. You may have seen the grad signs outside. Those are your graduates to keep. So they're actually gonna line up next to their signs um, as kind of a receiving line outside is a beautiful evening. So take your time um, hanging out with them and just soak it in and soak it in with them. Uh, there are some water and some Capri Suns and some cookies out there um, that are uh, for you guys. So just enjoy, feel free to hang around and, uh, and feel free to leave when you're ready. Let me close this in prayer. Dear Holy Father, thank you so much for the privilege it is to be a part of their lives. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, we just commit them to you. We commit them to your purpose and to your plan. Lord, I pray that you would remind them constantly that you are theirs. And most importantly, Lord, that they are yours. We commit them to you. We commit this evening to you. Pray that you would keep um, us all safe as we travel home and as we just love on each other this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great evening.